Hello, this is the exam one review for um, spring 2018. Okay, so I figured we'd go over the review slides. These are the uh, um, going to be the three answer questions that you're going to see. It's a piece of the textbook. So, um, so you're going to have a, uh, an isomer question. So they're also called constitutional isomers. So you get a, a formula like this, um, and so you know, draw two isomers. So they both have to have this formula, um, but they also must uh, they must also contain so, easiest way to start is to just start with the carbons. Okay. An alcohol group is going to be um, an OH, not coming off of either a acetyl blanco or a, or a, or a, a benzene. But, you know, we can start, you know, we can put it here. That's on the desk. So, there we go. Um, so, we have one hydrogen, so we need to fill in, right? So, so we've got two bonds left, right? So, you've got your bond like that. This carbon still needs its uh, three. So there you go. Right? So one, two, three, three carbons, one oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight um, hydrogen. Okay, so the other way that you can do it is to um, say put the alcohol here. Okay? So, that, so, so this carbon only has three bonds shown, so we need to put a hydrogen there. Three, so you get, you get a, the proper number of bonds. And you can do it as a, um, any structure you can do as a skeletal structure, I don't care. Right? But you do have to be careful with these because you don't want to have it, you don't want to do something like this. We have the OH here because this molecule and this molecule are exactly the same, exactly the same way. They just um, flip the molecule. So, so you do have to be careful. So the answer would either be these two, or it would be these two. I don't care which. Otherwise, you can't have just this and this. So, okay, so, so with the formal charge, normally we would have multiple ones. Um, so, we did. so, and then what you do is you then just add up all the ones that you've got when you calculate it to the formal charge. Okay, so remember for this, for the uh, for the formal charge, remember, right? Each electron, each bond has two electrons in it. So we're gonna we're gonna slice through each one of those bonds. Okay, so now the oxygen is gonna look like this: one one electron from each one of these bonds, and then it's an all pair. Okay, so it, oxygen has six valence electrons on periodic table. Right, so we start with that. And how many does it have now? One, two. So the you know, formal charge is, is plus one. Right? Now, you, I just say anything that's not indicated would assume zero. This is the only one I have marked, so the overall charge is plus one. So you would just add them all up. Okay, so for hybridization, now one of the things you want to do is make sure all the hydrogens are, um, are drawn in. That's the first thing you have to do. So for this one, um, you're, the, uh, um, it has one, two, three, four bonds shown, so you don't have to worry about it um, for that. So you're looking at, at lone pair sets and bond sets. Or you, another way I, I just heard is that you can look at it lone pairs plus the sigma bond. And that's another way you can do it. Um, this carbon doesn't have any lone pairs, but it does have two bond sets here and here. So that means your... Um, the hybridization is going to have two letters, so it's going to have S and P. This one, and P. so this one's an SP or SP one hybrid. Okay, for this for this oxygen, right? There's two. There are two uh, lone pair sets, and then two bond sets. So we're going to need four letters. So we're going to have S P three P. Right? So S P three. Easiest way to Okay, so um, for these, I'm going to point to a, a bond and ask you to, to say how many um, sigma and pi. And the nice thing about um, these is that there's always going to be one sigma bond, no matter what kind of bond it is. Okay. So that, and then it's how many pi bonds, or how many of 
each additional bond in here is going to be a pi bond. So, so this first one is going to be a sigma, and then the second one is going to be a pi. So this one goes one, one sigma, one pi. Now these should add up to how many bonds there are, right? So we have double bonds, so one, one, there's two. Here, we have a sigma bond. We have to have that. Um, since we don't have any other bonds between the sulfur and the carbon here, that's it. That's all. We just have the sigma bonds. We don't have any um, pi bonds. So again, this is a single bond, right? This adds up to one. So we're good. Okay, so for the Gannett structure, so what you're going to do is try to find the longest stretch of all the carbons. And then, so go ahead and write those out. One, two, three, four, five. Right? So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Like that. So you, you can always mark them if you want. One, two, three, four, five. Right? So one, two, three, four, five. It makes it a little easier for you. Okay. Now, what is attached here? Right. Um, is going to go afterwards. So this is. So this carbon has a CH three. This carbon has an, has an H, but it also has this CH3 coming down, which again I've, I've collapsed it to, uh, to O here. Okay, so here we have a CH. Now, if there's a double bond, you have to show that. Single bonds, you don't have to worry about. Double bonds, yes. Pure blood, yes. Um, this one also has an H, okay, but it also has this double bond here. This one has these two. Um, hydrogens coming off of it, and then also an OH. Now, now you're not going to want to put this H in here because it's going to get confusing. Um, for that, and so what you would do is you would just put OH here. So for that, so you could have it like this, which if you want to shrink it together would look like. The other way that you could do it, um, you could put this up here, or you could put this as a parenthesis in here. So, so another way you could do this, right? So there, there are several ways that you could write this. Like that. So you could do any sort of combination of these. When you have a branch like this, um, it's coming off, you can either offset it like this, or you can put it in a parenthesis. Okay, so now skeletal structures. I want to make sure that we're doing the right focus. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for this one, remember, we don't have to show the CH bonds. So the easiest thing to do is just get rid of the any CH bond here. So just scroll it out. Okay, now this H we're going to have to keep, right? It's an OH bond, so that we have to show. So when you're first starting out, I always like the dots, stuff like that. So just transpose these carbons as dots. So dot, 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 dot. Okay. Put in the bonds. So single bond, triple bond, single, single. So this carbon is that. And now, now this one you're going to have to show. So double bond to an O. It's always good to put them in little pairs. Okay, and then here... O. Okay. And then O H. You could collapse this down to an OH. That's that's fine. You can do either way. So that is that's perfectly fine. If you want to do a sawtooth, one, two, three, four, five, it would be like this. So one, you can always put in your dots. You could also write it like that. Um, but there's a, a triple bond here, and so there you go. You could do either way, I don't care. Okay, so for the resonance structures. Okay, so first things first. So I always start off with the, um, these first two things. First one being, you gotta draw the hydrogen. Okay, so this hydrogen is shown, right? These two are shown. But this one, this carbon, these carbons here, only three bonds are shown, so there's a hydrogen there. Three bonds, 
Same goes here. These two, again, three bonds shown, so there's an H and there's an H there. So go ahead and show the hydrogens. Go ahead and write them out. Now the next thing to do is to go in and say, okay, are there um, the ones that are eligible for doing the resonant structures? They either have a charge, they have a they're part of a double bond, or they have a, a lone pair. Uh, what we're really saying is they have a free p orbital. Stuff like that. So here, this carbon um, is not going to be eligible. It it's hybridized all of its p orbitals. So the big thing is it doesn't have a charge, doesn't have a lone pair. Doesn't not part of a double bond. In order for this to be able to move electrons around, you would have to break a bond. And we can't, under any circumstances, move atoms around. We can only move electrons. So we're not going to be able to use, take advantage of this card. So at that point, then you say, usually you want to start with the charge. It's the easiest place to start. Okay, so say, okay, this carbon has three bonds. It wants a fourth one. So it's going to need its neighbor to help it out. So looks on this side, right, this carbon can't help out. It would need to break a bond. This one, however, could if it shifted these electrons up there. So you would end up with, so you can go ahead and just draw on all the, you know, draw on your hydrogen. Since nothing can, no atoms can move, you know where it can be. So we didn't do anything with that double bond, so it still stays there, but we can move this one up here. Now this carbon has only um, three bonds, so it bears that positive charge. So again, like this one, we're going to have to look at its neighbors. Now we could look back here and chip this down, but we would just get back to that um, resonance structure. So we're going to do just like we did um, here, but look on the other side. We're going to shift these electrons over. So this has come over here. Now this carbon only has three bonds, so it bears the positive charge. Now the problem is, so if we wanted to keep going, right, we'd have to, um, we'd have to use this one, but we can't. It's, it doesn't have any available electrons for us to use. So we've come to the end of our um, available atoms, so we stop. Okay, so, so for dipole moment, you can either use, um, so you're going to need to do each polar covalent bond, okay? um, and then you want to do an overall um, dipole. Okay, so carbon carbon, right? stuff like that. So, so for there, you're looking at if there's a gap between it, um, between two different atoms, okay? uh, electronegativity gap. Now carbon hydrogen, that's actually um, basically covalent, stuff like that. That's not a polar covalent bond, stuff like that. So you just ignore that one. But carbon carbon. Um, it's the same electronegativity, so it's technically always going to be a, a covalent bond. Now, when you're looking at um, dipole, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a double, a single, or a triple bond. It does not matter. We're just looking at the difference between the two elements. Okay. And so for this one, right? So we're looking at carbon versus oxygen. Right. Oxygen is closer to the fluorine on the periodic table. Right. So it's going to bear the it's going to be more electronegative, and so the arrow would be like this. Okay. This is part going towards the more negative one. Okay? Same thing down here. The polar covalent bond is going to look like that. Now, with the arrows, what you want to do is then just split the difference. Okay? So for this one, the overall is going to be halfway between these two. So, so this one is the overall half okay? If all of these, so let's say there was an oxygen here, then, so you would have an arrow there. That will cancel everything out, and so that you would write no overall dipole. Okay, so be sure to write that, otherwise I'll think you were forgotten. Okay. okay, so for the IR spectrum, okay, so what you're looking for is um, you will get this chart. Um, so, like that, so this is the chart you're going to get. Okay, so what you do is you look in and say, okay, 1650. What could that be? So we look down here. No, 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 1650, so it could be, um, could be part of an amide, okay? but it could also be part of an alkene, okay, for the, 16, the 1650, okay. that's about it. Okay. Now for the 
30, 50 here. That's going to be, let's see, it's going to be the alkane C8 bond. Uh, let's just do that. Nope, that's, about, that's about it. Okay, so it has to, it has to cover all of these rules. So with that, so this one right, doesn't have an alkene, right? So it can't be this. So it has to be this. So you, so this one corresponds to, to this. This corresponds to this is CH bond here that's coming off of the. Um, that's like coming off of the double bond. Now just be careful, because if I had written, um, let's say this. What you would do, so this you would only get, say that um, you would only get the, the 1650. Okay? So if the problem was this, okay, yeah, you come in and say, oh, 1650, oh, it's, a, it's putting this alkene. They both have it, so which one? You, what you have to recognize is that if I don't write something, there's a reason for that. So in order for this molecule um, to work, we would have to have this 30. If I only give you this, then it must be this one because it doesn't have any hydrogens coming off of the double bond. So be careful about what's written as well as what's not written. You have to be able to predict um, what the molecule is going to, uh, the spectrum is going to look like. Okay. So this last one, right? So we're looking at, at function groups. You need to circle it and name it. Okay, so you just start at one end and, and make your way across. Okay, so here's the acetyl bond O. So whenever you see that, alarm bells need to go off, right? Because you need to look on both sides. Okay, so over here is just a regular carbon. Over here, it's an O carbon, right? So if there's an OH, it would be a carbon so gas. If there's an o, o carbon here, then that means that makes this an ester. Okay, now the benzenes you don't have to worry about. Um, here you have an OH. Right, there's not a C double bond O here. If there was, it'd be carboxylic acid. It's not directly attached to the ring, to the benzene ring. Um, so with that, so it's not a phenol, so that makes this just a regular alcohol. So this is Tobiad, this is a butyteridine. It's used for overactive bladder and different things. Here, this is a, um, you don't have to write, this is a benzene, it's a phenyl group, um, technically, but, the, uh, um, but you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so come along here, so you have a nitrogen. It's not part of a C triple bond end, so it's not a nitrogen. Trial group, nor does it have a C double bond O directly in, next to it, right? You, you'd have to look here, here, or here. It doesn't have any of that, right? So um, it would just be a regular 